Yo, what's going down, Green Screen Entertainment supporters? Your homie's back right now with my review for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Yo, I often love this movie. Now, first off the top, if you keep your ear to the ground like your homie right here, then you will have probably heard that this movie is bigger and better even than the first film. Now, that's a big statement, and there's been a lot of talk about other films that have come out as of recent, including this one, where people are saying that type of thing. Oh, it's bigger, it's better, the best one ever, all that type of jazz. But I'm gonna tell you like this, everything that you've heard good about about this film? It's true. All of it. It's all true. Now this movie sees the return of screenplay writer from the first film, Lord Miller, but now with the help of his brother Chris as well. Are they really brothers? I'm not sure. Maybe the last name is just a coincidence. Kind of like a Babs and Buster Bunny situation. No relation. Anyway, these two have teamed up with a new host of directors in J.D. Santos, Kemp Powers, and Justin K. Thompson. Let's talk about the story. This movie starts off with Spider-Gwen. We're in her universe and getting her backstory as to where she's at right now. Then we catch up with Miles, who is a little older right now and in a position in life where he's gonna have to make some choices as to who he's gonna be, what direction is he gonna go, and how is he actually gonna be able to affect change for a lot of different people in a different way other than just being Spider-Man, that is. Both he and Gwen hella miss each other, and once they eventually get together and catch up, Miles learns about what Gwen is into, and he wants to be a part of it too. She tells him he can't, that she might not ever see him again, and then after a super heartfelt conversation with his mom, he realizes, yo, I can't let this chick go, and he kinda goes after her. And once he catches up with her, he's kinda creeping in on a little conversation that Gwen is having with some important key characters, who I ain't gonna mention right now, because I don't wanna spoil nothing, and I want you to go check this movie out, for yourself but because of the information that he catches on to he just kind of follows her when he's not supposed to and now we're off to the races and we got spider-man across the spider-verse damn now again as i go through this review obviously i'm gonna be super vague because i want y'all to experience the story unfolding for yourself but i am gonna touch on some key elements that i think you will probably enjoy because i know i love the hell out of them and it makes this film worthy of a trip to the theater. So check this out. Based off of the story that we're getting, not just from the first film, but kind of leading into this one, I can see how some people out there are already saying that this might be their favorite comic book movie, or it's up there with the best comic book films of all time. It definitely makes a lot of sense, especially for this generation. But for someone like myself, who is at the perfect age for Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 2, X2, X-Men United, the Dark Knight, and that first Avengers film, you know, movies like this, it would be pretty hard for me to agree right off the top that this movie is in that upper echelon of special comic book films. But like I said, the way that this story plays out, picking up from the first one into this one, introducing all the different characters and different uh, multiverses, if you will, into the story, and the way that it leaves us in the end with Miles having to make some serious choices, yo, an argument could be made. The direction of this film and the artistic styling, just like the first film, beautiful and outstanding. But more than the movie just looking dope, the way that they chose to allow the background images, art style, elements, colors, and all of that to play off of characters' conversations, actions, emotions, and things like that to help progress and tell the story, I thought was genius. It's almost like that background that you wouldn't even really think about much in another film is a character in of itself. Dope as hell. Now I saw this film in a Dolby cinema at an AMC theater and I'm really sitting there watching this entire movie play out with all these sounds, textures, and visuals like god damn. I remember when I was a kid and you're in your imagination playing with your toys or you're reading a comic book and our imagination is coming to life and all this is just playing out on screen and I'm like to be able to tell the story with just those visuals alone let alone the character dialogue and all those plot elements and things like that, it's really awesome to kind of see all of those things come together so seamlessly throughout the entire film. Big ups to the entire creative team behind this film, this franchise, I should say. The voice acting is amazing in this movie. Animation is a great medium in which to tell stories, but sometimes there are certain movies with great stories and plot lines, but for whatever reason, sometimes the emotional weight to that story can get lost in the mix, right? I feel like the voice acting 
again, along with all the other visuals and everything put together in this film, were able to tie in that emotional element. When there was time for fun, you had fun, but when it was time for the emotional weight to kind of punch you in the chest, it did just that perfectly. Now with a movie like this, you can expect hella references and hella Easter eggs, but I'm gonna tell you like this, your homie right here probably missed on hell of them because I'm not that very well read on the Spider-Man comics or the early 90s Spider-Man cartoon. I was a little bit more of an X-Men or Batman animated series guy myself. But in the end of the day, it didn't really matter because the way that the movie places these deep cuts in or these Easter eggs in, it kind of explains them enough for someone like myself. Now, if you are someone out there who is super well read, you ain't gonna miss a beat and you're gonna be so happy every time you see these things pop up because I'm pretty sure it's gonna tap in to your Spider-Man knowledge. Now again, I just came off of seeing this movie, so I am on a Spider-Man high right now. I'm really thinking about something I can say to give you the pros and the cons. I just gave you a lot of pros. Story's great, acting is great, artistic integrity is beautiful throughout the entire film, Easter eggs and deep cuts are not so over your head that you're not along with the story, it's just all so effing perfect. We see Miles Morales growing up, he's got some life choices and decisions to make, they got some stuff going on between him and Gwen, just everything is great about this film. If I had to nitpick on something, this movie's sitting at about two hours and 20 minutes. Now for me, I enjoy a long movie, especially when it's all good. There's nothing in this film that to me weighed it down and made it feel slow. It went by like that for me. But for some of y'all out there, I'm pretty sure there are some superhero monologues and conversations that they probably could have cut a little short here or there or even took out altogether and this movie would still flow and you'd still get all the emotional weight of it. So if there was something I had to nitpick on, maybe they could have shortened it just a little bit for those reasons. But other than that, I'm good. And I gotta say this right quick before I get up out of here, y'all. This Spider-Man film is how you do a multiverse movie. This film gives respect to every single character that plays a role in this story. Whether it be a small role or a key role, gives respect, development, and care for every single character. So again, like I said, no matter what you see in this film that may or may not go over your head, you are still right along on this journey with our key characters, and that's how it should be done. Marvel, take notes. I'm not even finna ask you if you're gonna go see this. I'm telling y'all to go see this damn movie. Big ass screen, you're gonna enjoy it, guarantee that. Yo, you homie, Jay Green, I'm out.